let's look at how to set up a bin D or bind DNS server and how to configure a forward zone on an Ubuntu Linux machine. So first of all, I have an Ubuntu Linux machine. And you need to make sure that you have your DNS service installed. So I'm logged in as root and I'm doing apt install bind nine. So that is a good version of the bin D service. And if you are testing things out on a different machine, you might want to also install the bin D9 utils, which is part of the bin D9 list of files or packages that are installed. So I've got it all installed. Next, I want to go over to the etc bin D bind directory. And you can see there are a list of files here. One of them that's important is the named.conf. So if I cat out that file, named.conf, you can see that there are three included files. There's a named.conf.options, the dot local, and the dot default zones. I want to go ahead and leave the options alone. We can take a look at them. There's there's very few options in here. You can add a lot more later if you want, but we want to get a forward zone going now. So let's take a look at the name dot default zones. You can see this is the general set of zones and these are also great templates and they show you how to set things up. All right. So uh, we're going to take this uh, local dot DB file and we're going to copy it. So if I take a look at directory right here, you see there's a local or DB dot local and we're going to copy that one. So copy db.local and we're going to copy it over to db.example.com. Now it doesn't matter what you name the file. It just has to be addressed and loaded and just know that as long as it has a name and the name is unique, you should be pretty good. Um, sometimes people have their files named with a dot zone extension. We don't need that. Um, We'll use this db.example.com. All right. So I get into this file, and you can see the comments right here at the top start with a semicolon. And this is a bind or bin D data file for local loopback interfaces. I'm going to go ahead and change that and change it for the example.com domain. Next thing we have is our. TTL or a time to live. This is how long the records last once they're requested. So if you have a DNS service or something that requests them and you get them, then it keeps them in cache for a certain amount of time. 604,800 is seven days. So one week. My start of authority, you have your, your server stuff here. So I usually put the name of the server right here. And then you have an email address. So this would be root at localhost. You can see this dot right here, but you replace it with an at sign. Maybe you want to do it something like a admin dot example dot com dot. Now, if you forget the trailing dot, then it gets really confusing because it assumes that this is part of the example dot com domain. So all these domains have a trailing dot. They're just not visible all the time. So if you forget the trailing dot, it's a problem thing. Okay, let's go ahead and delete these. You have a serial number right here. Serial number is two. Each time you make changes to the DNS server, you want to update that number, just increment it by one or something else. Um, the refresh, retry, expire, these are just numbers in seconds. All right down here, I want to create my entries. So my machine right here is well, let's see, 10.0.2.15. So I can just call this, say, example.com dot in A is 10.0.2.15. So it's saying that the example.com is, well, 10.0.2.15. Now, because um, I'm doing this for the example.com domain, I can actually take out this stuff in the front and just put the at sign here. 
So the at sign means the the whole domain. All right. Now I also happen to have a name for my machine. I call it server. So server.example.com. So maybe I want to call this server in, and I can create another A record, 10.0.2.15. Or I can say, wait a second, this server is the same address. So I'm going to use a C name or an alias. C name. And I'm going to say this goes over to example.com dot. So server.example.com points to example.com, which is the 10.0.2.15 address. Maybe we want to have a different machine that's a DNS server. So maybe I'll call it DNS in a, a DNS records need to have a records. I can't do C name records. So do 10.0.2.15. And then maybe I want to have this be a mail server as well. So I can, or maybe I want a mail server to be different. So I'll do mail in a, it's a 10.0.2.25. So mail.example.com would be 10.0.2.25. In order to get the mail routed over there, you might want an MX record or a mail exchanger or mail exchange record. So I'll do for the entire example.com domain, so the at sign, in MX. And then I need a priority number, so I'll use 10. And then I need the name of the server. So I do mail, which will automatically tell us mail.example.com. Or I can go ahead and spell out the entire thing, mail.example.com dot. So it's up to me, it's up to you, whoever, if you want to do the longer name or if you want to keep just the shorthand and do mail and just know that it's going to do mail.example.com. And then my DNS server, I could do uh, the DNS server for this domain would be at in NS, and that would be my DNS dot example dot com. All right, so we've got a couple different records here, and now it's time to go ahead and load these records up and make sure they all work. So I'll go ahead and save that. You look at my file list, and there is a named.conf.default zones. Let's go ahead and edit that one and add an extra zone. So do nano named.conf.default zones. And at the very bottom, I'll add an extra zone. So do zone. And in quotes here, I will type in the name of the domain. So example.com. Then I will have a close or open curly brace. Next line, I'll type in type master, which means this is the primary source of the record. The file is whatever I named it. So exam, or it's actually etc bind db.example.com a semicolon in the end of that line. And then I have a close curly bracket and a semicolon right here. Don't forget that trailing semicolon. It causes problems if you miss it. Exit out. Save that. And I can restart the service. So I do system CTL restart name D. So the name daemon. So once the service has been restarted, I can go ahead and do a status to see is it actually restarted and running. Sometimes you have little errors and it isn't actually running. And this one, it looks like it's running, so it's probably fine. All right, next I want to use the dig command to see if I can actually see records. So do dig at localhost. So I'm going to use my local DNS server. And I'm going to look up the example.com domain. And you can see the example.com is 10.0.2.15. <clears throat> That's nice. Um, what about server.example.com? Well, you can see server.example.com is a C name that maps over to example.com. And then it tells me just to be useful 
that example.com is an A record that points to 10.0.2.15. What about my MX record? If I want to send mail, I use type T, MX. And I went for the example.com domain. It says, oh, the mail exchange for that is with a prior to 10 mail.example.com and it also tells me that mail.example.com has an a record that points to or 10.0.2.25 so you can see how this works and you can see how to set up the record there the last thing you can do sometimes when you don't have it uh, blocked you can do a zone transfer and take a look at that so if i do a dig at local host minus t a x f r for example dot com i can see a complete listing of all of the records and this is sometimes really useful if you think you might have made a mistake and you just want to verify things anyway this is really helpful so i hope that helps you figure out how to set up forward zones